You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. I run the intro first. Yeah, no, I thought you were saying that yeah. we were going live. However, whatever you just said. Hey, welcome everyone to the uh, Shake the Baby Funhouse Doug Stanhope Podcast Company Christmas Party. It's Christmas in July in late May. <laughs> you know what? Every day was better when we didn't know what day it was. Uh, so yeah, we, we decided to have our company Christmas party because that was the first time that the Chaleys and I, uh, ate out at a restaurant together. Mm -hmm. And we always do our company Christmas party at the, uh, Hana Tokyo Sushi in Sierra Vista. And so we went there and we brought along Dave Rader because Chad Shank doesn't go out and we couldn't get him. Uh, he didn't answer the phone for our podcast. But then again, we don't. You, uh, I'm really bad about planning our podcast. I just go, hey, you want a podcast right now? And Chaley will say yes or no. Or I have to do Andy's podcast, Know Your Place. Uh, <laughs> so, 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 yeah, it was, it was a beautiful day. Uh, 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 Raider doesn't eat sushi, so he sits there like a like like he's in, in a, a, a baby seat and eats teriyaki or something. It is like a nine year old. Yeah, it's like listen. All right, we'll make you deal. Eat one, I don't eat one try bite. It. Eat one bite, and then you get to watch TV. Yeah, and you go to them to like just try a little. He gets some sampler plate of something other than sushi, but it did also have. Uh, ginger on it and pickled ginger, and, yeah. And you, you ex explain to him just, just you know, try try a little bit of everything. And so he tried the uh, the the ginger and said, uh, "What did you say?" It it, it tasted like eating one of those uh, moist, wet, dry, a wet nap, yeah, 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 yeah. wet nap, like you get it at Kentucky Fried Chicken, yeah, yeah. which yeah. was a, a very good description. But then when, when we left him unattended yeah. with our eyes, he uh, his little baby hands got into the wasabi, which he was being experimental and yeah, took a nice took bite a of wasabi. Full cheese. Went, ah. Yeah, that, that was that was that was a mistake. I mean, Doug, you and I, we obviously enjoy sushi. Mm -hmm. We've had sushi a million times, and you love to challenge yourself at, by eating the biggest yes. glob of wasabi. Well, not only that, but bite. but like I'll eat like I'll eat whatever's there. You know, usually, yeah. and it, could you imagine at this at our age right now trying sushi for the first time? That's what I, I was trying to say. Like, expand your horizons, Raider. This is this is an, a moment that I'm going to remember. And he's like, it tastes like a wet towelette. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is a premise I was working on. Just a list of things I, I I've done uh, that that I would have never done if it weren't for a woman. <laughs> and or COVID, <laughs> that'd be a good list. Was it COVID or a woman <laughs> that uh, made you do something? <laughs> well, no, alcohol. Like uh, we always d discussed, if we made. Uh, uh, hang on, I was telling you to write that down for me. Oh, so sorry. Oh, that was it the was sushi. Sushi, I would have never tried except I was trying to impress a chick. Really, Jack Jackie Trinka. Oh, yep, in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm like, all right, I'm. Uh, She's also the one that uh, uh, convinced me to get an earring. <laughs> uh, Good job, Jackie. Yeah. So wait, just, wait. An earring at like a piercer or an yeah. earring like, hey, give me that safety yeah, pin. He's good. Potato. He's, he's down. <laughs> yeah. No, no. She. I went to the mall. Oh, yeah. I remember I, I drank a big gulp cup of rum and Coke on the way there. I was so scared. It's kind of like my first vaccination shot. Uh Wow. Uh, so yeah, the same, I, just you're seeing the seven year old girls get it every day. Right. <laughs> yeah, seven year old <laughs> girls get them. Uh which is not like that should be an age of consent thing. It was one of the when I did the hidden camera thing, uh it never worked, but we brought a baby in because it was just eyeglass camera. This is the late nineties. Was, was this just, uh the the um was it, uh Beware of Doug? Beware of Doug, yeah. yeah it was uh and you, we brought. We finally found someone to give up a baby because <laughs> you only had the eyeglass cam, so oh, you try to find like a, a prop, 
and like so I could put the the baby up into the shot in and out while I'm talking to the person behind the counter trying to get you know nipples pierced <laughs> lip pierced uh, tongue pierced <laughs> uh, but they were t- all tattoo people so they didn't react like, wait no. your own or the baby's the baby, like oh, I'm trying to get the. Well, if you can do it to a fucking seven year old, why not? Why can't you do it to a fucking uh, that, baby? That is a thing in the. Seven year old can talk, but but it, like even uh, babies, ba- infants yeah. in the so in the we, Mexican culture, yeah. they will pierce the earrings. They'll put yeah. little uh, tasteful studs. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, uh, the earrings. Yeah, sure. But I'm saying it's it, when it comes down to what part of the body is it okay to pierce. Yeah, and fucking yeah, in Kenya they put a plate in their lip when they're five. I don't know. Like, at what point is it okay to to do that? Hey, I'm fucking three years old and I fucking have nine metal rings around my elongated neck and I can't hold my big head up. At what point do you say no? That's really one of the at biggest. The fourth. Yeah, it's one of the biggest issues where it comes to yeah. When anytime we have you know conversations about well you you can't you, you like what you can do with children as a parent versus as a society like it's my <laughs> you can't tell me how to raise my kid uh yeah i know i i agree that that shouldn't be a thing but i also think there's times where you're gonna go listen no <laughs> <laughs> and i think you know, if, if you if you can pierce an ear you you can pierce a tongue <laughs> I, like if you convinced a child it was cool, they'd do it. That's but that, why. But the you're running into saying, it. "Oh, well, a seven-year-old can talk." They can say no. Well, then that's is that an excuse? To, well, hey, uh, you molested my kid. Well, she's seven. She could have said no. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna say, that, Jesus. It, 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 being able to speak in? doesn't mean a, uh, an adult human won't do something despicable to them. Right. Yeah. I remember when I grew up, tattoos were illegal, like completely for anyone in Massachusetts. In well, fact, wait, check, hold yeah, on, for adults? Yeah. Nope. You don't think maybe this no, is something crazy. your mom fact told check. you? Right. <laughs> no, I was. Uh, I didn't want one. I never wanted a tattoo. I think if uh, I think there were years where I was an uh, impressionable enough that if Jackie Trinka. Uh, Told me to get a tattoo of a pierced ear and sushi, <laughs> a, 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 a su- some kind of sushi fish with a pierced ear. I yeah, I would have done that too. A skipjack tuna wow. with a pierced fin. <laughs> Tattooing was actually illegal in New York City until 1997. Yeah, so, what? Wow. It was, it's, it's a health issue, which is a, it's just bullshit. It, it's just pure puritanical. You shouldn't get that. It might be the Jews. <laughs> Ask Raider. You can't get buried in a Jewish cemetery. And you know what? Those Jewish cemeteries, they don't want to lose revenue. <laughs> <laughs> we control the, the, the banks, the media, and the plots. <laughs> Wait, with it with a no, That's not plots with a Z. It's not Yiddish. I'm talking about cemetery plots. Plots. <laughs> <laughs> is it is, can, with a piercing or t- tattoo? I know a tattoo. <clears throat> I think you can have piercings. They fuck, They use health code issues for yeah. every fucking nonsense thing. Where you know, oh, uh, titty dancers having to wear the what do you? They're, they're basically Tassels. pasties, but pasties, they're, yeah. they make them you know out of you know band aid, you know what Elmer's glue or whatever. <laughs> Well, oh, because you lactate from there. Well, okay, then let's balance that against letting women breastfeed on a bus. If it's such a health concern, you get to tell that uh, you know a recently unpregnant lady that she can't flop out her tit in a subway. Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. Behind the stanchions, we have a, a, a breastfeeding mom over here. You need to be eight feet. Wear a mask. <laughs> Stop the bus. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I, I love that concept of balancing one bullshit thing against, okay, you, you can't say fuck on terrestrial radio. Okay, but we hired our sideline, yeah, our, 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 our third man there, our, what do you call it? The guy you pick on. The intern. Yeah, but no, Side the kick. whipping boy. That's what I was looking for. All right. Whatever. It's, they're, they're but all I'm similar. saying you hire one that has Tourette's and you use the Americans yeah. with Disabilities Act against the FCC and pit fucking red tape versus red tape and let them work it out. Meanwhile, your sidekick is barking fucking yeah. obscenities every 
third word. No, that's not. Oh, whoa, hey, it, he's he's free speech. Yeah. And he is. He came in here with braces. So right. I mean, are you going to cancel him? <laughs> You're going to cancel a a, a a a kid with a mental illness who just got his big break in radio. You motherfuckers. <laughs> that's the, uh, probably the only thing I miss about radio is that it was you could you could do shit like that in small markets because I was in a very small market and we got away with a lot of shit because we well we, at one point we were number one and then whatever but um, you you could fuck around and there was there was always someone angry at you <laughs> for trying to have fun <laughs> between the hours of 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. you know you're not playing enough songs who cares there's, yeah, get a it CD. doesn't matter. They're all on. They'll hear them from ten o'clock on repeatedly. You're playing most of them four times a day. But yeah, that was that was one thing about radio. I, don't, I mean, not enough that I stayed in it as a career. Yeah, yeah. I was I was doing Johnny Dare. Did I talk to you about that? Because you you had to be doing a live remote. You were in. No, no. I I did it from in from the uh, Airbnb that morning. Oh, you zoomed it in. No, just phone. Oh, just phone. Yeah, yeah. That's old school radio. Was Which I just dial? I, I totally channel my my inner Stanhope of like, good morning, because like they've already been up. Yes, you know. And I woke up twenty minutes beforehand, and uh, yeah, was in the just, bathroom. Yeah, I had to go in the bathroom, much like doing issues with Andy podcast. No one wants to hear me yell to someone they can't hear, and uh, yeah, it, it was great. Johnny Deere's a great. Uh, He's an ambassador for all things Halloween, which yeah. is awesome. And he he knows his shit, which is awesome. Yeah, we and did talk about this. Yeah. Anyway. But uh yeah, it was it was great. We went through it, but it's like he he is the consummate professional in that boom, bang, boom, done. And yeah. then that's it. I've talked more to the producer Jake <laughs> than I talked to yeah. Johnny. Just because he's got a whole fucking day and I'm I'm stoked that he even remembered to to include us. And then he came by the booth and checked out everything. And, uh, you know, it was pretty slow this year. So I got to walk him. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Let's, uh, should we do a recap since it's the uh, random company Christmas party? And uh, uh, no, there's nothing to recap. No. Slow year. <laughs> 25% of our sales usually what we do. I talk to my accountant. Is there anything else you need from me? He goes, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Good year. We just, I just uh, went on stage for the first time Saturday night. We had a, I had a bit of a banner week. Uh, I have, okay, remember what you're talking about, yeah. banner week. I have an idea for the next time you're going to go on stage. I'm writing it down, All right. and we'll go to that. Go ahead, your banner week. Well, I, I, we've 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 known. Obviously, we can do shows in here. We filmed uh, vo- uh, Papa Vodka Presents in, uh, here, and uh, as like a tester, but it's still available on Vimeo. It's got some uh, <laughs> some VHS. Uh, hmm. Yeah, oh, it's, uh, yeah. We still have a few VHS yeah. left from the uh, Doug Stanhope uh, merch page. And- Andy's is being released on Eight Hundred Pound Gorilla. The audio that was recorded here. Uh, June 25th and then this is the kicker they're only doing the audio Andy's in in charge of the oh, video no. <laughs> oh my god and I'm like you're fucking kidding me right he goes no no we'll be good I go you understand that if I try for the last month uh, Nature Jack which was an easy way to remember how to get to Andy's weird fucking URL is still down. He goes, well, you know, the, 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 no buts. You, you're the one in charge of the video release. He goes, yeah, they handed that over to me. I'm like, well, they, they got, the, they got the best team. Yeah, you know, I get a, a long email from Inman about how people hate him and he can't get on issues, and it was, it was at least eight. <laughs> Nine paragraphs long, yeah, full paragraphs, not haikus, <laughs> and it's just the, the fucking redundancy about. You know, and I did the unbookables. Like he wakes up every morning at six a.m. to Sunny and Cher, "I Got You, Babe," <laughs> and he's in a small, strange town promoting the unbookables with the same complaints and the same things for the last 14 years 2013 that came I out. didn't even write back yeah. I, 
Uh, it's just, yeah, it, it, he's a conspiracy theorist that won't. Yeah, I think it's because someone dosed me uh, with acid on uh, one of the nights that we were filming, and now I know why people hate me. <laughs> oh my god, it's <laughs> it's just Bill Murray trying to get out of fucking Groundhog's Day with a different solution every time, but it's the exact same set of circumstances. See, you gotta go with it. You but gotta the thing go with is, the flow. You know what? I'm gonna give Inman props. He fucking filmed something and it went out. Yeah. That is <laughs> Andy? <laughs> That'll be going on three years. Yep. Mine took a year due to whatever circumstances. Well, you had a little more juice behind you on that. I think we were looking for more juice than we had <laughs> yeah. on that. I think is what Brian least, was up to. At least there was juice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so so yeah we we knew that uh, like we kept talking we've talked for the entire COVID about we can do shows here you know uh, for people who have been quarantined and now that people are vaxxed I've just put it up because I know I'm going to have to write material so I, uh, Thursday morning Bingo came over early and you, know, you want to have a cocktail 8am cocktail and actually just, if we invite people then we're going to have to do the show cuz she was on it her and Tark performed a couple of songs vodka juice box and then uh they were great yeah i had floyd and uh fury fury killed yeah. val mamu uh, valentino one up yeah. uh and christine, christine Levine destroyed mm-hmm. uh fucking really dark stuff that's in the moment and not resolved <laughs> about a fucking missing relative that might be dead. I'm like, man, this is strong. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we uh, we did comedy. I spent six hours at the dining room table with fucking notepads, uh, and I you know it, it, it felt like doing comedy, and it, it sounded in the, it, the tone of doing comedy. I don't know if it was funny or not. I'm not going to listen to it. I don't have that kind of free time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it was fun, and then we did karaoke afterwards with uh, Mrs. Michael Bean, uh, uh, who's an enthusiast to say the least, and then eventually everybody. Well, the Ocho's too, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Lady Ocho. Yeah, the Ocho's She's the one who in the loud out. house in the neighborhood. Now we're getting old. Not that night. <laughs> we we really didn't pay attention to the curfew. <laughs> yeah, we didn't shut the door either. Yeah. I realized we should have just shut the door to the fun house. That way, it's at least muted karaoke. Because like of all the things you're gonna call the cops about, yeah. But when you put that thing over a, a trumpet, yeah, a mute. you still hear it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it yeah. was still probably annoying. If you're gonna call the cops over a band. <laughs> comedy or karaoke it's gonna be the karaoke maybe we should have started with karaoke mm. but no one sings karaoke sober mm-hmm. new uh, but that was a fucking blast it's a good time it's been since Andy that we've had a show in here almost three years uh, and, 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 and Dave Rader not only is he a crooner in the very 40 cents he could sing but he also brought a cheese plate from mild Mile High Munchies. Mile High Munchies. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Barbara Brewer, who is the, the owner of, of said uh, store. I went in there. Barbara, uh, I know you're listening to this. When you told me the price and I handed you my credit card, I was not paying attention because I was talking to you and I was talking to the other gentleman at the time, you might remember, and I'm an absolute shit multitasker. So I didn't realize what you did at the time. When I did get the email receipt, it's then that I realized that you very much gave me the friends. She double charged you. No. Double, triple. No. Yeah, no, she, she, hooked, she Jake from State she, Farm. <laughs> yeah, she Jake me big. She Jake me big. She hooked me up big time. She so Jake me off. So, you, so if you want to get Jaked off, head on down to Mile High Munchies. <laughs> yes, that is true. But Barbara, thank you. I, I did. I, if 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 I walked out and you're like, you didn't even say thank you or nod. Don't let the fact that I'm a moron like dissuade you. I, I realized it later when I when I got to the funhouse. Thank you very you much. You did hand her a credit card and not a card that said, "Do you know who I am?" <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of local uh, uh, plugs, 
Uh, also, uh, Sierra Toyota. Uh, you know what? I've dressed as a used car salesman for years, but this week I've actually sold to. <laughs> Getting rid of some of my lot. I don't know if you know it out there, but for some reason the car market is spiking. If you, if used you want, car market. Used cars and, and new cars. Well, new that, cars, there's a, there's, there's a problem with uh, delivery right now because of the, uh, the, the, some of the raw components. Are yeah. they're ramping back up? So used cars have gone up, and you've taken you full advantage. Who knew you were you were cornering the market on used cars years ago when you bought? We thought you were buying them just because of the flashy colors. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't do. I did a little bit, but if I had done it from the beginning to just because they they were advertising, hey, we'll pay up to a thousand over Kelly Blue Book value. Uh, please, we need used cars. They always say that. She's trying to sell you a used car. Get your fucking. Sounds like going out of out of business it's, last week. Yeah, ever exactly. liquidation but sale? Like, no, we're serious now. Yeah. We're and they are. They're, Trust me, they're spending the fucking money. <laughs> That's true. And I I needed to get rid of some of these stupid cars that I bought because they're funny colors. <laughs> uh, so uh, so yeah, what I I, I should have gone from the beginning and just. So um, you'll be buying this car on credit? Uh, can I get you a water or a coffee? <laughs> I'm going to take this number to my yeah. manager. I'm, exactly. I don't know what he's going to say. I like it. And then just, I- just duck around a pole <laughs> or squat behind one of the cars and go, okay, he says that we could do, if we can throw a few hundred dollars more at that, then I think that would be a workable price. <laughs> I love that scarf. Where'd you get it? <laughs> Flatter. Yeah, you were in there. I remember that when we went to buy those cars, we tried to do it in less than an hour. I think the first one was two hours. Yeah, two plus. And like we just squeaked by, if not because oh, I remember it went a little bit over because the guy's like, "Sorry, by by law, you have to drive the car if yeah, just no. if just to the end of the lot and back." Yeah, so it went over the two hours. But yeah, this was very fast. They <laughs> they don't give a shit paying money out. Yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. worried about making everything right when they're collecting money. So, yeah, see Eric Morales at uh, Sierra Toyota and say, Super guy. show me the money. Ye- yell that. <laughs> Date yourself. Just jump up and down. I said, <laughs> when I sold, sold this last one this morning, I said, uh, um, can we, uh, we, we'd, we'd love to get a picture of you with the car for our <laughs> PR department. Because hey, when I bought the uh, fucking the tour van. Yeah. They're like, uh, because they run pictures in the showroom of yeah. people smiling next to their new car. Everyone wants and to I be was, famous. I was like, I'm absolutely not doing that. I'm <laughs> absolutely not doing that. And then when they asked real nice, I'm like, I, I can never. Be. I go, okay, but um, I, I'll only do it with with no shirt on. And they go, all right. <laughs> so I took my shirt off like some fucking hayseed. We got Photoshop guys here. You can do whatever you want. You can be naked. It's going in our promo. <laughs> but the whole point of we we calling in a van is because we don't want yeah, I don't it want... advertised. Exactly. <laughs> We're rolling around in a Toyota Sienna, but we don't we don't say it. We call it a van. So so I did uh I did uh, all that uh that epic day drinking that last yeah. Thursday. With bingo. Yeah, well, I started with bingo, but you don't stop. Not if, nobody stops drinking. So it just went, I have no idea, there's missing chunks of that day. But at one point, I got a, a spam risk call. And I'm like, I'm, I'm in the mood. I hope this is not a bot and it's an actual person. And it was, and it was some call center. Fiona, God love her. Fiona. I guess she was trying to sell. I have it on speakerphone, so you know to amuse the kids. But she's selling a solar panel. Solar panels, which I probably should have heard her out. But yeah. you don't buy it from Spam Risk. No. That's a that's a, a number one rule in the buying department. <laughs> Sellers always be closing. <laughs> Buyers don't buy from Spam Risk. Uh, but yeah, if you if, if you're out there and you do solar, fucking shoot me an email. Uh, is that something we should definitely do once I have a job again? Well, you also told her that we run a solar company, which immediately killed her erection. <laughs> that's a good one. I was as a strong move on my part. I don't remember it, but hearing was, it back, I was right there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, 
at some point she had a sense of humor uh, uh, and her English was good enough to get some of the jokes and I told her uh, with all humility hey I'm famous <laughs> Google me right now. And she did. And, you know, I probably look really famous to her in her cubicle, you know, uh, in her tiki hut, wherever she... <laughs> like, she wouldn't tell me what country she was in. Uh, but No, what, she lied to us. She told us we're, uh, she was in the same uh, time zone. And she kind of was, but it's 12 hours off. Yeah. Yeah. Turns out... Because when she she Googled me, she goes, oh, I'm going to WhatsApp you. I'm like, all right. Had no recollection of that. Woke up the next morning at whatever, five in my own filth. And uh, <laughs> I checked my messages. And, uh, and then I have a WhatsApp. And occasionally I'll get a WhatsApp spam. Uh, just hello with a picture. of a, uh, This was no picture, but it said, hello, uh, is this Douglas? And uh, I I look at the country code, Pakistan. Yeah. And I said, Fiona? <laughs> and I, 12 hours later, yes, it's me. <laughs> so, and I still, yeah, still shoot a random, how are you? She says, I'm great. I just uh, had a party and sang karaoke and it was fun. That sounds like fun. All right, this is probably like, yeah. Like I've made a few jokes where I go, um, "Are you uh, are you allowed to do this where you live? Like, don't you just get drugged behind a horse for even simply talking to a man?" <laughs> well, I am in the capital, so I it is different. We do ha not have many freedoms, but we can be discreet or what? Like, all right, I'm not marrying you. <laughs> I, I think you were engaged. <laughs> you gave she, her a WhatsApp uh, number. <laughs> she said to she said she said to my brothers will be looking for you. <laughs> she said the picture of her face and I go cover your face or otherwise they're going to hurl stones at you and set you on fire. <laughs> that does not Did happen she, here. Ha 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 ha. Oh, I was going to ask if she had a sense of humor. I'm not good at math. If she says she's 12 time zones away, that's halfway around the world. Yeah. Was that a clue? Well, well, she no, lied. Uh, no, she lied yeah. and said it she's, was, it's the same time there as yeah. it is here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it wasn't until it was only because I've been talking to these comics from India. Uh, oh, that's right. You did a Zoom call with uh, I think three dudes. right? Yeah, I did a couple. Hmm. Hey, I'm sorry, I can't remember your names, but I could pronounce them if I was reading them. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah the, 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 and of course uh, Pakistan and India do not get along I don't know if they have comedy in Pakistan uh, like a lot of uh, towns or countries or they have Pakistani like they, comics they have, here but they'll have they'll have underground probably which is you know if that's like uh, circulating pamphlets about uh, starting a union at Apple <laughs> like you don't want to be caught like reading one or <laughs> handing one out yeah I because I, the guys in India I remember on the tour uh, Indian rape the the tour yeah I remember was it Seattle that we had like very vocal very like like appreciative. Indian dudes who are like, dude, that is fucking hilarious, and they were talking about comedy in India and stuff like that. And yeah, it's, like, no, it's always played, going to be something. In Thailand, like uh, three or four Indian comedians flew from India for the show. Oh wow! Um, might be a short jaunt. Might be a jumper flight. I don't. It's been a while since I've had a globe. Uh, I'm gonna piss too, Chaley. You. Uh, it's cheap to. We gotta take a break anyway. It's cheap to fly when you don't come from America. <laughs> When you're flying from a European destination to another European destination oh, we'll or somewhere about else, that next we with can. My fucking cheap your, your flight, big flight after my uh, big flight. All right, we got right, a new please. sponsor coming up. So yeah, Bisbee Laundry. Yep, <laughs> and cafe. Please hold. Good goodness, BetterHelp.com. Mental health care. It's very important. Do you think that this podcast is talking to you directly? Do you feel like somehow every word we say is telling you, go west, go to the pilgrimage, 
show up at their house. They're talking to you. No one else can hear it. Have you felt this way ever since Art Bell went off the air? That's not a good thing. Don't come here. Go to BetterHelp.com. BetterHelp is affordable private online counseling anytime, anywhere other than here. Connect in a safe and private environment. It's so convenient. Unlike driving your motorcycle with your tin foil helmet all the way to our podcast going, I know what you're saying to me. No, I wasn't saying it to you. You tell it to BetterHelp. Do it at your own time and your own pace. Communicate with your therapist as often as you want and wherever you feel it's needed other than here. Help is available at your time and your place. Better help is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. They're not watching you do it. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist that wants to talk to you. And you are allowed to connect with them in a safe and private online environment. Anything you share is confidential. No one's tracking your thoughts. You can start communicating in under 48 human hours. Counseling doesn't have to be expensive and BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. Pay a low flat fee for unlimited counseling with your counselor. Send a message to your counselor anytime. Don't email me and switch counselors at any point if you don't feel you're getting enough benefit. Find the particular expertise you need online. Don't limit yourself to the counselors just located near you. Licensed professional counselors who are specialized in relationships, anxiety, depression, anger, family, conflict, sleeping, grief, trauma, self-esteem, and LGBT matters, as well as you think my podcast is secretly communicating with you, which it is not. Thousands have benefited from online therapy. Just check out their reviews. If you want to start living a happier life today, as a listener, you're going to get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor, betterhelp.com slash stanhope. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health care. Again, that's betterhelp.com slash stanhope. And stop coming to my house. Please continue to hold. Your call is very important to us. Do you know as a Doug Stanhope podcast listener, you can go to the Doug Stanhope. Do we have a slash Stanhope? That if they if they go to DougStanhope.com slash merch slash Stanhope, they get 10% off? No. If you are a... I know, but I'm saying we fucking have a slash standout for all uh, uh, all the I other know. sponsors. Why? That's, why I we... should not be saying no. I should go, yes, Doug, we have something similar. Yes, and Which is, uh, if you are a member of Patreon, at certain levels, you receive a coupon for a percentage off of all merch wow. sales. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm going to sign up on Patreon. You should. <laughs> Good, because you're not getting a discount from me. <laughs> you're not getting one until then. Uh, but did you know you what wanna... I'd wear my own merch? <laughs> Laundry day. <laughs> All right. <laughs> did you want to do a slash Stanhope for a special deal? I don't know. It's funny. But you I just did... thought it was funny right now. If it's funny tomorrow to you, well, you do that. I don't know how merch works. I just know we need more of it. I've sold. I've got a couple of things that we've got in the works. Mm. One thing I insist upon which we don't have is the Tracy sticker because we've got the the um, stickers that uh, a, a listener made for us. It's uh, you and I and Chad, and those they're they're uh, cartoony kind of stickers. And there was a Tracy one, and I don't know why I didn't do that originally. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna add that for the sticker pack and uh, license plate frames. We're gonna come up with those. I love those killer termites. Oh yeah, Bisbee, Arizona. Yeah. I miss baseball, man, to be honest with you. I was just thinking about that the other day. Yeah. Yeah, it was one of those good things that became, oh, wait, you guys made that it we fun. we ruined? <laughs> no, no, they we made it fun, and yeah. then, then we were kind of under the gun to show up all the time. Yeah. 
uh, you guys are coming down, right? It's you know it's a big game against uh, you know Casa Grande. Well, it's, it's, that that means nothing to us. <laughs> shuffling down there in a bathrobe and trying to make up barbs. It's like you having to do a podcast that you agreed to and you didn't remember until right before you're supposed to do the podcast. That happened yesterday. I know. Thaddeus but- Russell, let me give a plug because I in- it ended up being one of the my favorite podcasts I've done in a while because he completely caught me off guard. I was out selling fucking used cars and blowing <laughs> off, shirking my responsibilities. And because I wasn't, you know, in my head about it, like, yeah, it came off completely natural and not just the same shit I say all the time. Still a lot of that. But anyway. I was just going to say that it's kind of like that in that if we had to go down to a, a baseball game and we knew about it, Two days before, ah, oh, fuck, and then it's a thing we got to do. Yeah. Whereas if it's like, it. hey, they're playing, hey, fuck, grab the cooler, let's go, and that would be one of those things where it would. Turn Imagine into if fun. you went to a fucking Marlins game or something, and and all the players are looking up into the stands waiting for you to show up <laughs> to make it fun for them. I still get deuce chills thinking about when we uh, we were doing the actual play by play, like. And then we didn't have the national anthem, and then you did a Roseanne bar, and then right then, the the guy that was running the field just was fucking <coughs> daggers at us. And at the fourth inning, it's like, out of here, guys. You're done. You're done. They shut us down. <laughs> and then we still- That was our PA. I know. Yeah. And, then, and then we still did everything we were doing over the PA, but yelling it from the stands, because he didn't have the foresight to go, and uh, when we kick you out, we have a policy that you have to leave the premises- <laughs> Yeah, they just kicked this out of the announcer's booth. (laughs) Not uh, acknowledging the fact that we can yell as loud as our PA. Everyone can still hear us, and you can't do shit about it. Or that we smell like a brewery on school grounds. (laughs) The the, the high school, like, maintains that property. It's it's an extension. it's basically high school property. Yeah, we should have been arrested. (laughs) Instead, we just went, we just sat two rows in front of where we were before. Yeah, I'd go go six, eight rows up to smoke out one of those back, (laughs) like, window things. The back row? Yeah, but I'm still smoking up there. Fire hazard 1918 ballpark. <laughs> I mean, that guy. I'm sure it was out. I think I stepped on it. <laughs> it's all wood. That guy wanted to punch us, but it was one of those things where he was, he had a title that he was watching this thing and he's like, that's it. But it's like the thing, like grabbing the microphone, the, the, you're, you're, you're done. You're done. Yeah. Well, he was yelling at us for not having the national anthem Which, queued yeah. up. We didn't, we didn't work. know that was They asked us to bring a PA down. And I was, I was literally, I was literally thirty seconds away from downloading like, uh, like uh, the best rock jams like compilation. But like the the Wi Fi, I bought the whole album because I figured we could use you know Center Field by John Fogerty. Yeah. I, so I got the whole thing. I should have just got the national anthem and played yeah, who it has through. the fucking national anthem on their fucking iPod naturally. That guy does. That guy <laughs> plays it on. He had it on his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the tour, <laughs> the national anthem tour. <laughs> yeah, so Takes maybe. his hat off in his own car. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he goes to work every day. <laughs> uh, all right, where where? Uh, yeah, I have some notes, but uh, oh yeah, where I'm going? Yeah. So uh, I've been doing. A, a, since, well, since, well, let, let's yeah. take a little context here. You really, for the listener, Doug never left during COVID. A few John, what we just talked about. Yeah, there was the I, first restaurant we all <laughs> enjoyed together. You did the twenty eight hundred plus mile trip. Yeah, when did Tracy a 10 and day I driving tour, listening to Audible books. I fucking now I like I I I stopped doing that at home, and now I get a, a good one. Uh, it is pretty good. That's great. Yeah, you just heard half an hour. Uh, Annie got Jacobson, and someone had like I got involved in a tweet with her. Like, of uh, someone was tweeting her and me at the same time. I forget the context, and I had just seen she had an Area Fifty One 
book that I almost downloaded when I was doing that tour because I was on the extraterrestrial highway that goes by yeah. Area 51 in Nevada. White Sands. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. And I'm like, uh, I asked her on Twitter, which one? I want to start with Area 51, but she has the other one about how we felched all the fucking Nazi scientists, for which overlaps with Area 51, as we've been listening. Uh, and so the Area 51 book by Annie Jacobson about, on chapter three it's covered so much usually and I I gave Thaddeus some shit Thaddeus Russell whose podcast I just did he wrote The Renegade's History of America which I read it ten years ago uh and I, I guess I said on the podcast that uh, there was way too much facts in it for me <laughs> but I, I I don't remember what I said he said it was 10 years ago. Have we been doing a podcast for 10 years? I think we're in our, we're entering our, I think we're in our eighth year right now. Anyway, the, she's the opposite. She gives you so much information so quickly that you can't really space out. Like, I only have it at uh, plus 110 speed, like, because I'm missing stuff. She doesn't tell you, th- you know, she tells you once. <laughs> Got it? Bikini Atoll. Operation <laughs> Cross, not cross words, cross words. Uh, <laughs> Crosswind? Anyway, whatever it was. So I'm like, all right. It's fucking fascinating. And uh, yeah, it makes me want to just keep driving. Uh, Crosswords, girlfriend or COVID? <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, I haven't, I haven't been on a plane and I do, which I've always done. Is but you did fantasy travel. But you did that trip for twenty hundred plus miles. Yeah, like just tri- like rolling around, going yeah. and checking out. You did the Clown Motel, and that was a fucking hilarious podcast. And you did that thing. That was the first time you've really gone out and ventured in a year. It was a first, crazy flight on four wheels. But for the first with, time with no since you started comedy, that was. It's the longest time you've been spent in your same bed, and it's the longest time you haven't been out on the road. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, and and the not flying thing. Where now? So I I, I wasn't expecting to fly anywhere, but just it's the same way anyone else searches eBay or you know just fucking throw them over the fence Tracy there's a paring knife we need a the- we need a a, a a kitty trebuchet so we can launch him at neighbors bye bye you're out you're out don't come back uh she cut a, a thick of fur off of Meatwig, Meatwig that was is a like very a- hairy cat that in, in the uh, dry months now which uh, we're in the driest month he fucking the cat lays in filth and and burrs and he develops like an armadillo's <laughs> siding of of dreadlock like was, he he is a feline stanhope <laughs> you could <laughs> With you, hair, you, you you could hit him in the side with one of those. Uh, what do you call those? The riot Red guns pellets. that yeah. shoot the bean oh, bag, a, like a like, yeah, like and a it wouldn't wake that cat. Dog up. the bounty hunter, or, or yeah. yeah, the bean bag guns, yeah, riot guns, salt gun. No, the, the non lethal shoots a fucking bean bag. Yeah. I remember the Boston pigs fucking killed a girl. Is that a team, Boston? No, pigs? no, those oh. cops. <laughs> They're pigs when they kill a girl for celebrating a Red Sox victory with a beanbag gun to the eye. I remember writing an open letter to them. Hey, Boston police. I'm a bigger Red Sox fan as anyone, but you know, it's really hurting the sport when you kill a girl in the head with a beanbag gun. <laughs> I, it was very funny. I don't remember. It was tw- 25 years ago. Uh, anyway, uh, so I'm, I'm fantasy Delta surfing like where I could go to and all these places that I've always thought about going to but it's it doesn't work out like Gibraltar is where I looked that up and uh, Delta doesn't go there and I've always wanted to go there because it's a weird sounding place you can see Africa from there Rock of Gibraltar yeah yeah so where is it it's a territory on the bottom uh, the uh, peninsula of Spain Uh, it's the entire, it's not a country, but territory is uh, 2.6 square miles. The entire thing. 
but it's a, 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 a British territory. So it's which Britain's is, Guam. Yeah, which means they speak English. Yeah. Like when I think about going somewhere, that's why I always wanted to go to Guam because it is a, a British territory. I mean, a U.S. territory. So I know they speak English, and it's a tiny island, and it's fucking there's no glut of travel to guam it just takes you 46 hours to get there uh and this was the same we couldn't get there on delta which is a big thing uh how far could you get on delta well i i could go to london i figured out if i go to london i get a fucking steal for first class to london and there's only two flights a day from heathrow to uh gibraltar uh, and you miss them. That's why it's a 38-hour flight because all the flights that Delta brings in... They don't connect. They, they're, it's after the two yeah. flights. But my favorite hotel in the world is the Yotel at Heathrow. It's like Woody Allen Sleeper. I'm sure if you listen to the podcast, I talk about it. It's I, We just realized what a great place to trip that would be. It's like a train car, but it's all perfectly white Ikea, but as small as a train car, and you sleep in this kind of like bunk with a TV at your feet. Coffin with a TV. Yeah, and it's got a little a toilet shower, like a like a beautiful Icelandic prison. Uh, <laughs> it's... And, and and that's where me and Olivia Grace, when we stayed there, when we went over to pitch a show in London a couple of years ago, I'm like, no, we're staying here the last night. We're going to get there in the afternoon. We're staying. We get an early morning flight. We went bar hopping on the trams to every terminal at Heathrow. <laughs> we hit every bar on the outside of security in every terminal. We were tweeting it. We're doing a Heathrow pub crawl. Is at- Heathrow 24 hours? Uh, well, we weren't. No, well, no, I doubt it. I'm just no. saying, it's like, as far, not like as far some as bars go. Yeah. No, but we started in the afternoon. We knew we had to get to sleep early. Yeah. Uh, and we I, the Heathrow Airport Twitter account was tweeting back at us. Hope you're having fun. Don't get too drunk now. We're, <laughs> We're like, following you. It was like that was way. Like, it was like a celebrity <laughs> tweet. Like holy shit, the airport's tweeting back at us. That we ran into Glenn Wool on that trip with his. The tweets wife coming from kid. inside the airport. <laughs> yeah, or at some bar, and fucking yeah. Glenn Wool is like leaving, moving from London to back to Vancouver or whatever, and he showed up all bedraggled after fucking running a U-Haul all over London to get his shit out of there, and he came in with his kid. I, I didn't even mind his kid being there. Some screaming baby it was it wasn't screaming. I'd remember. Point being. When I realized I can fly into London, stay overnight coming in and out of catching the you know, British Airways flight to Gibraltar, and that flight round trip, 300 bucks. Yeah. It's more expensive to stay at the hotel for two nights than to fly round trip. Like, flights over there, I mean, ask Joby, uh, like, flights from London to Portugal, I think, were like, you could get them for like forty nine dollars round trip. Yeah, I knew a guy at when I was working at Real Networks in Seattle. He was from Timor. You know that's that? Uh, uh, only like, because way, of way Noam over Chomsky. There. Yeah, it was would, some some one of these you know wars that you don't know about and atrocities. He East would Timor. He would catch a flight to some other country, a bigger country, like a like a, a large a large metropolis, and then he would make the flights to Timor from there. Because if you made the entire flight from America, you'd get raped the whole way. But as soon as you landed somewhere else, third world, or n- not quite so second world, you could you could get a cheaper flight. And that's it's exact I forgot about that until you told me what was going on. I'm sorry, I'm just laughing at myself for wincing when you said raped. <laughs> we can't say it like oh that. God. Should I bleep it? No. Okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> It's an analogy. You know what? As soon as every fucking comic stops saying, oh, that's crazy. That's insane. That's fucking nuts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When you stop fucking using all those mentally ill fucking abusive terms. But yeah, then I'll, then I'll still keep saying whatever I was saying. I stopped myself with saying rape earlier when you were talking about the three Indian guys. And was, Indian gang rape. Yeah. So no, the no, oh, I was gonna. I was just, no, the guys. I go. Oh, those those comics. Uh, rape team India. <laughs> I was gonna. I mean, because you have, your joke is about. Yeah. When, and, well, I just I, had I stopped this, myself. I from had the same 
like, when we just broke to piss moment. Like, because I felt that just WhatsApping with Fiona where I'm making jokes about Pakistan. Won't you get fucking burned alive? But I realized, <laughs> like, it's, am I being racist? Or, but no, that's, they, they treat women very poorly there. I think, like, yeah, I'm right. She's like, no, that I'm in the capital. Like, that happens. Right. Oh, you have to be out of the city oh, limits. country Cousin. bumpkins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't drag you behind a horse in town. <laughs> we have cabs now. We've got those uh, three-wheeled <laughs> petty vehicles. <laughs> yeah. It's, See, I was going to say rickshaw, and I thought that was probably not right. That yeah, is wrong, wrong country. country. <laughs> oh, you'll, you'll always get shit because yeah. people can't stop themselves. Mm. Uh, so yeah, Gibraltar. I, I, I've got a, like a week there. So you've you've thought about going to Gibraltar in the past, or this just came up? And yeah, like, I didn't realize oh. I had a bucket list. I thought I'd done everything, but I go, well, I never did do Gibraltar, and I got a fucking steal on it. And I, I, I try to. I, I looked up all of the best. If anyone knows Gibraltar, uh, no, no, shut up. You, I, I know your your ears just perked up because your cousin went once. If anyone lives in Gibraltar, fucking hoon me an email or or, or a tweet. Uh, I I I looked up all the best bars in Gibraltar, and there's like a bunch of lists, and a lot of them have completely different bars. And I like, how many bars can I hit in two point six square miles in uh, in six days? Uh, well, but well it's a British to... protectorate. There's a lot of pubs. Protectorate. God yeah. damn it. He has such a good uh, vocabulary. You know, that uh, reminds me of when I went to the Cayman Islands. There also have some British connection there. Overlords. And what's that? Overlords. Oh, shit. Oh, Raider, you're back on. Uh, Guam, Tahiti, uh, Gibraltar. Three places I haven't been. Go ahead. Uh, because of the British connection, uh, they do a Pirates Week there, which is stay away from it. But uh, great fucking pubs, really good restaurants, and a lot a lot of people there. Everyone speaks English, English. Like, there's a lot of uh, British, British people coming over there to work on the dive boats and stuff, which was great. And I've, I've never been back, but it, I did. I en- I enjoyed it as a uh, as a place I never would have thought of going until I started diving. And uh, Guam is that is a huge destination for Japanese tourists mm-hmm. because they can go there and shoot guns and, and titty strip bars. clubs, titty mm. bars. Yeah, titty bars are not my thing. No, the Japanese. N- nor, this would, is, nor would a British titty bar, <laughs> even if it's just a territory. No, but Guam's ours. I'm saying. Yeah, no, yeah. I, but it, uh, I'm talking about Gibraltar. Yeah, I don't think there's a titty bar. Uh, well, you might get an email. I don't know. Nobody seems to go there. Even the British seem to hate it. I, I, I don't know. I've, I've read weird things. It's a fucking weird place to go, and I'm very excited. You, and it's have also... You, have, you, have you done the search on Gibraltar monkeys yet? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're not scared. Yeah, no, I know everything. I, I, right. I, 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 uh, tax haven... Gibraltar crime is 32,000 people there. It's smaller than Sierra Vista where we just had sushi. (laughs) It's fucking... But they speak English and it's in a weird place and you can literally see Africa right across the Strait of Gibraltar. Uh, Which I I won't go see. Uh, Oh, just look over there. That's Africa. No, I haven't. I'm I'm facing the other way on my bar stool. (laughs) I refuse. Maybe later. (laughs) Maybe later, if I'm really curious, I will turn around. But right now, I'm going to sit here and stare at my book. <laughs> uh, and I'm excited to be able to read again, uh, if I can still do it. But then, what happened was, I all right, I, I got this all mapped out. Then I'm back to the other night with Tracy on the patio doing more crazy flight searches. Well... The the great thing is I found a great deal for Gibraltar, but that's not till July, and it's May, so I'm ex- I, I was already starting to pack for, <laughs> for seven weeks. Seriously, out. you were getting your bag ready? Oh yeah, fuck you! You remember Stanhope State University? 
Yeah, they uh, they they sent me all this shit, and they have people send Stanhope State University koozies and take pictures of them from all around the world. And I'm like, "Where's my koozie?" Uh, Tracy has it. Tracy says she doesn't have it. Tracy, I had it. Do you remember that day? Yes. Yeah, I was and right. You were right because we're men. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Well, I mean that we're right. Hang on. Do we need to take a break? No, 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 no. Uh. Uh, Bisbee Laundry and Cafe. If you're uh, new to town, you moved in, you don't want to just keep uh, fucking bothering your neighbor to do laundry. Bisbee Laundry. Because sometimes your neighbor's hungover and doesn't want to fucking see anyone uh, walking through his yard with a fucking Ikea bag full of filthy fucking laundry. Uh, yeah, sometimes I like to lock my door. <laughs> Bisbee Laundry and Cafe. It routes well with Safeway. Make a day of it. It's got a cafe. Yeah, you could you check your tweets. Get a cob the salad. Tumble, tumble dry cycle goes. Yeah, I'm sure they have some finger foods. <laughs> and it hits Safeway on the way back. Huh. So you don't have to take a left. They Pick taste up like some bleach, beer. But you're fine. Yeah. You can do the post office. Laundry, Safeway, double back, switch the laundry. Oh, you can have stop a at Tin Town on a Wednesday and get free lunch. <laughs> Stand in line for the, yeah. <laughs> Bisbee Laundry. Hang on. Do you want to take a break? No, I don't want to take a break. I was going to tell him how to text... Why don't we do that? Why don't we have a Stanhope, DougStanhope.com slash uh, koozie page where people send in pictures with their koozies. Can we steal that from Yeah, you? we can steal that. Yeah, idea. let's steal that. We still have KillerTermites.com if we want to use it. What, what do you... Right. Uh, is her mic on? I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that, that's too much work. We want Tracy, we want to drive traffic to Mr. Stanhope's site. That's what we're trying to do. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, with those disease t-shirts. I think t-shirts. I'm, I think I'm making right. my own drinks for the rest. I about those today. <laughs> mm. Yeah, they've been talked about a lot for years. So, anyway. Tracy's my favorite hu- human being on the entire planet. I'm going to get your fucking shirts done. Don't yeah, you should I never don't. have gotten involved in that project, Tracy. I don't care. I don't mind. I have some good just things. one. Just one for me. All just right. one for me. And then I'll post pictures. Oh, that's easy. Give them that ratty one you wear, Trace. No, the no, the ones that I, I have. Know, here, I know, I 2004 know. artwork. Let's 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 park it. Let's, let's, let's go focused. back to. Let's stay. Focused. Yeah, I'll take a. Give me a. Uh, give me a double focus. Can I get a Negroni? Yeah, uh, you having a Negroni? No, right no, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Yeah, I'll have no, another no. beer. But it, I'll, I'll do a. Uh, I'll do a uh, whiskey uh, sour if we still have whiskey egg sour? whites. Whiskey sour. I'm here by the window, so I can hear you. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, so so I'm back on the patio with Tracy, watching the hockey, and uh, I'm doing my crazy searches again because July's not soon enough. Now I'm fucking amped up and tickled in the prostate to go <laughs> out and fucking travel. So I find I don't know how it came up, but it's a it's a bar that oh, has to be yeah. one of the best day drinking bars in America if you read the book that I wrote about the day drinking I don't know which one it is read them all and tell me uh, it has all the things that uh, a day drinking bar requires meaning it's in a, a motel or hotel that has a restaurant and a bar attached. This has, if you've listened to the last special, the exact kind of motor in. I'm not telling you where it is. No. <laughs> it's, it's on the, uh, the, the ones I mentioned were East Coast. This is west of the Mississippi. It's uh, in our time zone six months out of the year because Arizona doesn't change our clocks. So, but it has a motor lodge attached to a bar and 
we, I, we we will live Zoom podcast from there. I'm only going, I bought it, I got it on miles, which I never use my miles because you don't get miles by spending miles. Yeah. You use miles to get Junior Stopka on the road. Junior Stopka is going to be on the first tour that starts uh, August 10th uh, through uh, Denver. Uh, and then, uh, so he'll be on that 10 day leg. Dates are up on DougStanhope.com because I just got more dates today. We're still adding dates starting August 10th up to when you're going to make up dates for Denver, San Francisco, and all that stuff. Boston, yeah. Uh, we added a show in Boston. Uh, yeah, so yeah, we're, we're still figuring out how we're going to work this, but Junior, Junior's never done that uh, mountain state tour, the mountain time zone tour. <laughs> and I said I, I, I had never book him in the summer because of his uh, a, a aversion to deodorant. Uh, and yeah, he, he can smell bad in the hot sun, but well, you know what? I don't really care. I mean, I just showered last night for company Christmas party today. <laughs> and I, and I remember Saturday night, I, I suited up for the one of the few times during COVID. I actually put on a suit for that show, and I had to peel off two-day-old socks, and they stunk. Like, I, I'm... A, I'm short, but I'm still far away from my feet. But just peeling my socks off, I'm like, oh my god, this is terrible. That was Saturday. I still didn't shower till Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going. Uh, I used Miles, and uh, the, the 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 motor lodge was only like eighty seven bucks, a uh, hundred and ninety one dollars plus bar tab. In a very, it's a town we don't even play in a state we rarely go to only for fun. I'll just say that. Uh, uh, I've, I've, the last time I was there, I was doing a triple gig in like 1992, and a girl uh, uh, asked if she could blow me on my way out after the show, and I said yes, and she blew me in my car for a couple of seconds before she started to vomit, and I had to move <laughs> move her like her head out outward through the driver's door and then she puked while the doorman came over to fortunately she was laying on top of my cock that would have been out she's laying across from wait the you passenger. stopped the blowjob she did to vomit well, I, well but you didn't make her finish <laughs> no i you know what was weird chaley and even at a young age it turned me off yeah <laughs> it, it is one of those things you don't know what your limit is until you're faced with it but i i I always maintain there's no stopping. Lewis Johnson from Denver was a comedian that uh, had a bit about how once men start fucking, you're going to keep fucking. I'm doing a disservice, but it's you know 30 years ago. And he goes, she could fall off the bed, bust your eye open. Baby, that looks really bad. You're going to need stitches. As soon as I come. <laughs> <laughs> he was also the guy that had the bit that I'll never forget about. Man, I've been married so long. I don't know what I'd say to a girl in a bar. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I'd say to a girl in a bar. I think I'd just walk up and say, I'm going to the store. You want me to get you anything? <laughs> no? Then don't be bitching when I get back. <laughs> He's the guy that Hedberg and I were opening for. Hedberg was the opening act. I was the middle. And Lewis Johnson was the headliner. And he, they had some goofy promo for him that we did acid. Me and Hedberg did acid back at the Hampton Inn by the Mall of America. And just we spent seemingly acid hours goofing on Lewis Johnson's promo, whatever it was. I don't know. But it's... The, the the memory of the, the the feeling is still there. I don't know what we were saying, but I know it was a TV promo or a, like a advertisement. No, or? no, like whatever. Knuckleheads was Knuckleheads was the oh, name okay. of the club, yeah. and Lewis Johnson and whatever his bio was, whatever it was. Yeah, we were just goofing on this st stupid sounding. Like everyone's bio is, oh, he takes crazy takes on. Uh, and then we watched some like uh, KKK 
documentary on HBO that was on. We were up all night and goofing on that. Like, uh, like whatever it was, the KKK kept getting raided by the feds or whatever. And we're like goofing on I don't know how they keep finding us maybe it's the cameraman whatever <laughs> we were just laughing our balls off at everything until the sun came up and we were waiting for the Hampton Inn lobby breakfast but we're still fucking bug eyed charcoal pupiled fucking tripping going oh we can't go into the lobby for breakfast they'll know <laughs> and we we went in like like serpentine stealth like, like yeah like cat burglars <laughs> trying to <laughs> breakfast get, ninjas yeah trying to get some fucking raisin ba- bran and, and a fucking lobby waffle <laughs> yeah that's that's so uh, Hedberg and I became close friends and it only takes one night like that where you go alright you had a show that night too yeah <laughs> later <laughs> well I was young you can rebound I know rebound. I love that yeah that's, we were just talking about that today the morning drinking Morning drinking is exceptional if you're a kid that can fucking take a nap. Like, I, I, I hate people who can nap. Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sleep for three hours and fucking rebound because I've been drinking all morning. No. Thursday, I was a fucking waste product up until I had to write jokes for Saturday. Yeah. Oh, uh, you napped. You you napped right uh, on the floor right, be- where you're right below your ass right now. You yeah. Were, yeah. Yeah. No, I just w- went out and pissed in your yard, and I thought, what a, Our yard. What a glorious <laughs> feeling to be this drunk and the sun warming my back. Mm. It's, it is. Yeah. It, it, feel, it feels good. I like it. I mean. Oh, not, you piss east? Well, if I have to. Well, I'm, I'm pissing towards someone. I don't know where I'm Mecca is. I'm pissing towards if, someone. As long as I'm with Fiona, I'm going to have to learn where <laughs> Mecca is. <laughs> I gotta piss away from it. I don't want to make anyone angry. Well, we're halfway away from her, so you could go either way. It's an equidistant. <laughs> I could go east. I could go west. It was all up to me to decide. A little Bob Seeger for your next uh, little teaser for our next karaoke night. Uh, all right, the kids are doing shots. I think we're gonna wrap up. Here. I got an email. Oh yeah. Hold on, I gotta do this shot real quick. Cheers. If you can figure out what that best fucking drinking bar in the western states is. People been to Wyoming. They know what you're talking about. Oh, oh, that much. was a misdirection. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, <clears throat> last podcast, uh, mislabeled as 456 because it's really what? Right. 446. 446. Yeah, yeah. I fucked up. I got to change that still. Yeah. Uh, we were talking... It was it was on the heels of issues with Andy, where Andy uh, he, he cut us off early. So then I'm like, "Oh fuck, Chad, you, you want to do a podcast with Stanhope?" <laughs> and I immediately texted you. Well, I texted Tracy. Hey, does Doug want to do a, a podcast? And we fucking ran up here. I, I had nothing set up because we were gone on vacation. And I come back, and that was the podcast where I don't even remember. <laughs> What he's referencing in this email, we were talking about hernias. All right. And getting hernia hernia checks when you're yeah, so was, young before you even lifted something 25 pounds. Yeah, you were just getting your tongue pierced barely, <laughs> and, and they want to fondle well, you your had, balls. You wanted the tongue piercing to match the earrings that you had when you were yeah. seven. So, yeah, so it was really weird. And I got this email from uh, AH, I'll say that. Uh, you asked Amber for- Heard? <laughs> Doug, no names. Don't. No don't. names. Don't. You asked. <laughs> Same person. <laughs> you asked for anyone who had a hernia before nine to send a note. We put an age limit on who can. No, no. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I don't remember saying that. I hope yeah. this doesn't go bad. Uh, they tell me I had a hernia at one year old. Oh. Who's pushing who? Oh, this is a guy with the giant ball sack. I don't know. I haven't read the whole thing yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wanted, I, I I wanted to react. This. I wanted. I wanted to react naturally. Go ahead. Uh, I they tell they tell me like you can't like say his parents told him uh, one year old. I also have an eight inch scar like Chad, but now t- that I think of it, how did that get me to turn my head and cough for the initial check at one year old? Yeah, right. Yeah, I get. I, get I have attached a a photo as proof. Oh. <laughs> 
It's just uh, a, give it it's, to give it's it. A, Raider hasn't really said anything, and he can read. He does things for a living, so yes. Yeah, uh, make all, him, second paragraph. Child porn. All right. It is weird that the the photo is nothing that would. It just looks like a like a scar, like a a shot or something. Right, luckily, it's not on here because I'd puke. Uh, also, during one portion of this podcast, I laughed so hard that I was literally chocking, choking, and giggling myself silly. Good read. Yeah. I cannot remember the last time I laughed that hard. You might appreciate this attached clip from my living room. Then again, you probably hear people laugh hysterically all the time. Chad was getting most of these laughs, but when Doug told the tale about when Bubba Chain, quote unquote, drew mud, I totally lost it. <laughs> Golden spicy brown mustard. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. I, I, I had no yeah, idea until you just spit, said that. Spit shit that's like right. a penguin yeah, yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Far and away. Thanks, Raider. Mm. Chalking, uh, you don't need a second. All right, no, someone else sent me an email about how they had a, a, a hernia when they were a kid, uh, and they were just discovering, like, oh, I have huge balls, and it was his fucking intestines dripping into his ball sack. Oh. But they were they were young enough that they he thought having big balls was a thing that was actually literally a good thing. And then he finally, when they were the size of fucking grapefruits, showed his friends and his dad and he's like, no, you you oh oh, that's what he said. God damn it. I'm fucking remembering. I'm that's not good. even reading this. It's on the he podcast. Said that that's good. When he showed his dad, he goes, if if uh, if that's not a hernia, I'll eat those. And he took them <laughs> literally and fled and spent the night at his friend's house. <laughs> my dad's going to eat my balls. Yeah. Uh, and then he said, well, now I'm like 44 or something. So you can imagine how my balls look at this age. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Wow. Don't worry. Listen. Nobody loves you because your balls are taut. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, yeah. Don't uh, don't ever expect us to remember anything that we said on this podcast because this podcast is only an extension of things that we were saying when we weren't recording. And you don't remember everything you said yesterday, but we appreciate you being part of our group and uh, and listening in for uh, for as much as w- w- we can continue to stomach each other <laughs> it's a company Christmas party Christmas in July in late May that means New Year's is just around the corner take us out of here bingo okay bye bye now bye